Nobody tell Kilts I've started. Oh, she's got to find me first. Right? So you guys know where this is. It's the iconic location for streaming. And here I am back in my mom's basement. I hope all the tech is working. I would appreciate uh, those of you in the unauthorized chat tell me right now whether this is working because, you know, uh, we've had already adventures on the traveling and the music and oh no she found me okay i better start the intro then You found me. I no! did. <laughs> I got gotcha. you. I mean, I have to. How far do I have to drive for you to not find me? This, 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 this stalking behavior must must uh, continue. I think so that we can do our live streams. Yeah. So that song just popped into my head where they're like, one way or another, I'm gonna get you. There's literally no location to follow. We're streaming. It doesn't matter. There is no. No basement deep enough, basement deep enough. There is no skyscraper high enough. We're going to continue to test this. We, we, we promise. We promise, right? Mm -hmm. I think. I think. So if you look, if you look behind yes. me, I realize we have all of my my um, stepfather's horse pictures and everything. So maybe that's how she tracked me down with the horse, the horse lust. I can find anything if there's a horse involved. I, I will remember this. Like, this is this is good. <laughs> okay. I'm 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 actually like coming down off a ride that, uh, that I did yesterday, mm. so I feel really sore. <laughs> I was I was riding a horse that likes to go diagonally, which doesn't make sense, but it does to this particular horse. <laughs> so just trying to get it to straighten up was basically my task yesterday. And, so it's, uh, it's it keeps yeah, drifting like... one way, and then it maybe it's dancing, right? You got the dancing horse. And you, should... <laughs> you you were you were you were you were. Yeah, <laughs> but uh, harshing its vibe. Come on, poor horse. Just wanted to groove. It just it's it's sort of it it starts to chill, and then once it starts to chill, it's just doing everything diagonally. <laughs> okay, so literally the I I know so, zero yeah. about horse riding except for there's this thing called lead change that's really tricky. And, mm -hmm. and that and that back yep. in the the dark ages in the ninth century eighth ninth century we have descriptions of the Carolingian horse practice which they seem to evolve lead change which apparently suggests that they're like really good at it or something I don't know I, I would say they would have had to have been because <laughs> their horses probably weren't trotting diagonally trying to throw them off all the time they would have had to have been really good at uh turning them well, they had no stirrups oh no they did have stirrups so it's like i think the stirrup is a is a is a, yeah. is a major feature um but that they're they're doing the the sort of making the horse trip it change its which front, front. so you just had one that was going this way right yes <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it would be straight and then all of a sudden start leaning. <laughs> it, it, it's kind of like where you see you see race cars drift as they go around a corner. Like the car isn't straight anymore. It's still going, but <laughs> it's not straight. They're supposed to be straight. So, yes, that was my experience. But I feel like I've been dragging. I mean, I feel like I've been dragging an animal that weighs yeah. a ton. It, it's, it's really hard physical work. You don't, you don't think it would be because, you, you know... It was like my my idea of this would be 
I'm just going to sit on the animal and it's going to be easy, it's right? It's not a couch. It's to your left, to your right. <laughs> no. <laughs> They're not couches. <laughs> very so, yeah. good i'll fi- i will find you if there is a horse in the background i will find you <laughs> well i took my dog to the dog park and he got boots today of mud it it the the, the it's a find, finding out oh. that you know the, the corgi with, with like little mud boots on looks higher so <laughs> and he was he was he wanted some stilettos. he was and he was standing <laughs> off against the german shepherd that was there taking all the girls all the local girls and yeah so uh, we've 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 had a day yeah (laughs) oh and i see i see actually there's a there's a blanket over on the couch in this room that says this is horse country so i was doomed you were gonna you were gonna track me down for sure yes (laughs) so what shall we talk about tonight hmm well um (laughs) In the spirit of driving a diagonal horse forward. <laughs> <laughs> I think there's a metaphor in this for sure. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and doing lead changes. Maybe we should talk a little bit about why uh, why the generation, uh, why the generations we're living in are <laughs> unable to progress in a straight line with anything. Nice segue. Yeah, you must you must be really <laughs> good at this. You <laughs> must you must have been like doing this for like over a year, so that we can like iconically stream from my mom's basement. And I okay, I did manage not to start my backup recording right now, so we may lose that whole fun introduction. But you know, we hope unauthorized is is working this time, and I don't have to use. I can use that <laughs> one as backup. Um, yeah. So on the drive down here, which takes two days and is for sure Route sixty six through missouri Mm -hmm. which means those of you in unauthorized land that are looking forward to the bear meetup in a week or so it's like 10 days from now right we scoped it out for you uranus fudge right there on (laughs) (laughs) i-44 and i found i found the big the big bear is there and fincy bear took a picture so i can prove it that i was there and Yes, they all announced that you're at your Ura- welcome to Uranus. Every time you every everybody who comes into the shop is welcomed to Uranus. Again and again and again and again. I I dare you bears. You better have photos if you're that down there, Missouri, because otherwise I don't believe that you're anywhere near the heartland. The heartland of fudge factory. The heartland. There was another one, right? There's a there's there's Uranus Fudge Factory, which I'm going to keep saying because they they certainly enjoyed saying that. <laughs> and um and oh and and the thing is with I I think this is all part of like why people can't follow leads properly and and can't keep all of the magic was mm-hmm. there, right? So there's the Uranus Fudge with the newsletter that talks about you know. Oh, I can't even, I can't keep going. They, 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 they're much better at being <laughs> intensely rude about a planet than I am. Um, they, they had dinosaurs. There, there, there were mm-hmm. dinosaurs. There were spaceships. There were, you know, Western sideshow attractions with, I don't know, the largest belt buckle in the world. We didn't stop for that. It was really hot. So, <laughs> and then we had to stop at the Walmart in Missouri to get a cooler to, to keep the fudge from melting that we bought because it was like 105 driving through. This is local knowledge now. And you guys, if you are not following me on all of these details, I don't believe that you're in Missouri at all. Mm-hmm. I'm in horse it's country, did you know? <laughs> <laughs> but this is so, it, you know, in between making jokes about fudge, we were listening to um, a lot of the Barbie soundtrack. That's for sure. I've, I've got it uh-huh. medium memorized. And I need you as a person younger than me who we don't No, Wait, no, you're a vampire. You're way older than me. But you pretend to be younger than me. And and to have done, we need a cover, you know. I, I I'm I'm fine with that. I'm, I'm I'm so ancient. I I'm so ancient. I realized I was born before 1973. And yes, it's not 1950. I was not born in 1950. I was born in 1965, the same year T.S. Eliot died in St. Louis. But I was born in St. Louis. Uh, mm-hmm. Wait, I think I can't remember whether we overlapped or not at all. I think I was born earlier that year and then he died. Okay, so 
before after 1950 before 1973 so not a boomer but born before <clears throat> my mother could legally kill me uh-huh. in missouri i was born in missouri before my mother could legally kill me which i then occurred to me that i you know it's like this this might have an effect on the generation that was born after i was <laughs> And yeah. it was reflected in the music yeah. I was listening to, which is all for that generation. I had this little meditation. Mm. Now okay. we've depressed all of you. You thought this we were just going to witter on iconically about horses <laughs> and fudge. No, we're talking about death. Mm-hmm. And culture. And why our culture is so ailing. Hopefully it's a little different now after Dobbs v. Jackson. But Roe v. Wade... It's been a reality for 49 years, and everybody born after 1973 is alive only because his or her mother did not kill him. Mm-hmm. I'll just let you absorb <clears throat> that one. <laughs> Where we're, yeah, well, I was going to say it's a bit like being saved from the glue factory, isn't it? Well, what, what it really hit me, I started thinking about this. So we've been talking about Barbie, obviously, and... Um, Mm-hmm. listening to the soundtrack one i have no idea where what where most of that music's coming from it's it's it it seemed to be various there, you're real i'm serious you're gonna have to tell me you know there seemed to be some rap i think there's such a thing as rap maybe it's hip-hop i don't know the difference is rap the same thing as hip-hop i have no idea um there there seemed to be i don't know if it, it again i'm making this up emo is that a thing rave music there was different kind of club beat sort of things they seem to it it seemed like i don't know a sampler of different flavors like in a fudge factory (laughs) (laughs) fudge factory fudge factory that's probably the best way of describing oh well yes full of sugar and and different you know the fudge we got we got cookies and cream and we got milk mint mint chocolate chip and butterfingers and one other, I always, oh, then a sort of uh, fruity flavory thing. And, you know, the, mm-hmm. the, there's the, a wide selection of, of sweetness that will probably kill you if you eat too much of it and go on a sugar rage. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So you're micro generation then, in a way. X, Gen X. I mean, so actually, yes, the mm. micro generation of the first half of Gen X, which is 1965 to 1973, before yes. our mothers could kill us legally. And then 1973 to 1980, which is the second half of Gen X, was when the mothers could kill us legally. Yeah. Okay. No, that makes sense. Because there's this micro generation between Gen X and millennial that they call a zenial, which is where you've had an analog childhood and then you've been thrown into mm. the digital internet world in your uh, adolescent period. So as a micro gener- like micro generations make more sense to me than, uh, than the, the broader ones after the boomers because there was so much going on. So you're in this Gen X micro generation where Choice is not a word yet. Right. Mm. I I really hadn't thought of that. And then there's the, okay, I do know <laughs> tiny bits about modern, modern, recent pop culture since 1980. Um, uh, yeah. Billie Eilish. It all went down. It all went downhill. I don't know. I, could, I was enjoying the Barbie music. <laughs> um, the, the Billie Eilish sings the song. That I think is, I, I also recognize, I had no idea where most of these songs came in the movie. It's like, is, was this in the movie? I don't remember. Uh, but this one was quite thought, you know, sort of sad and thoughtful and wistful. And mm-hmm. I th- think it's when Barbie is feeling, you know, allow, you know, it's like Ruth has said to her, feel. And a big, big, it could be some other time. What was I made for? Yes. And then I realized that. Th- you want me to sing it? Uh, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you can sing it. No, later. <laughs> so you realized. <laughs> that was a click one. Okay, so I realized, <laughs> I mean, Barbie is obviously all about being made. The the, ta- the doll is about yeah. being made to 
have particular roles and costumes and clothes and it's a toy and so it's an object mm -hmm. or she's an object and she wants to be real rather than an object and the the song is about what was i made for and then it occurred to me of course this this entire movie is made by my millennials I, that's right right people in your 40s mm -hmm. early late 30s early 40s there i mean maybe the tech guys are older right but the director the writer director the main cast members they're all around 40 so they're all in that post-1973 time when you only mm. exist because of someone's choice. <clears throat> and, then, and then the made yep. thing is, the what was I made for? Why, Mommy, did you make me? Why, Mommy? I'm going to start crying, right? Why, Mommy, okay. did you choose to have me and then of course the whole the whole horrible weight of all of this crashes down on me saying no wonder the millennials are nuts about the career stuff in the barbie it's like here you yeah. have to be this barbie i made you i didn't kill you and i'm certain there are women out there who have said that to their children because Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a, it's a. There was a like a common ethnic trope where it was like, I gave you a life, I could take it away. Right. You know? <laughs> but yeah, I so, chose, I chose yeah. not, I chose you. You owe me. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. And and so yeah. the what was I made for? Then it's like, mommy, what was I made for? Yeah. And then and then I started I started realizing, and there's a wonderful meditation that. I think it was one of our, one of your members of your chat on the diner shared it first and then I read it and I'm like, this is amazing. It's a meditation mm -hmm. on what do we have now that we've we're post Dobbs v. Jackson, although the states are all deciding that women could still kill their children, um, that uh, what the, the effect of having abortion on choice meant was women become killers of their own children and it's not. It's not a, 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 a neutral choice, right? They're saying, I made this choice because I wanted to go to college, because I wanted my career. So now, now, and this is, I think, the other side of the millennial horror is debt in, for college, right? I chose you. Yeah. I chose, I, or I could have killed you, but I didn't. I killed you, not babies the babies that weren't born, so that I could go to college, which means all of the mothers now who did that, who made that choice, have that sacrifice as the defining value of that thing they chose over their children. So college better be worth it. Mm -hmm. And now I'm in just, I mean, never mind Uranus Fudge Factory, right? I am in sheer yeah. terror <clears throat> of what our culture is and what Everyone younger, everyone who's born since 1973 has been having to live with. I feel really sorry for all of you. No wonder, yeah. no wonder mm -hmm. th those few of us in the, the 1965 to 1973 have this like crazy feeling like we don't belong in, in any of the the problems right now. Mm -hmm. It's like because we weren't, the, 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 the horror of it wasn't given to us. I mean, we had the moon landing okay fine but uh, you know yeah. the, the and maybe dinosaurs i don't know dinosaurs were sort of the, but there was not this sheer familial crushing debt of either you're alive because i didn't kill you or i would have had more children if i hadn't gone to college and killed them and so that i could go to college and that sacrifice it better be worth it yeah <laughs> heavy i'm taking that in um, there's a kind of, uh, there's so many ways we can go forward from that. I, you know, I cracked it with the girl boss trope this week. I'm done with it. Yeah. It's, it's useless. Um, you're describing something that I've seen the effect of in my generation in Australia, you know, the generation I pretend to be a part of because you can't tell people you're 423. You're 70, 473, uh, I'm sure you're changing your age. <laughs> you got to keep everyone guessing. <laughs> the, um, the millennials are basically uh, the most conformed to boomer culture of any of the other generations. Gen X are not conformed to boomer culture and neither are Zoomers, but millennials mm -hmm. were 
what you've just described explains it perfectly because the people that I grew up with that were millennials had a completely different outlook towards the older generation than the, the Gen X people, uh, which, you know, I mean, Gen X gave the world all of the music that I grew up listening to, which was a very strong rebellion from that older generation. Mm -hmm. It was, it was grunge. It was like smashing pumpkins. I mean, like all of the alternative scene that was out, everything was self-defining. The millennials don't have a self-definition. They have a referential in, they look to the boomers to define whether or not what they're doing is cool. So this makes sense because if they've been created through choice and not just like the, the lack of life springing forth out of relationships, uh, you have to earn that. Yeah. It's not a free, it's not free life. Uh, it's like, like, you know, it's, it's this weird thing. Boomers were in, involved in free love and then the millennials didn't get free life. And they really do behave with boomers. Like they owe them for being alive as a demographic. Mm. It's very, very common. It's very common. So the girl boss trope is useless because I don't think a lot of people are willing to look at exactly how difficult it was to come up in that generation and to say nothing that the boomers value is valuable to me. Well, that you were rejected you were rejected you were re by you your own rejected parents socially. as a as yes. a as a choice. Right? So what we had, I mean, when you're thinking about that, it's like we had talking heads and the the song Yay! we are creatures of yes. love right and that's like the babies yeah, yeah. are creatures of love everybody since 1973 yeah. is a creature of choice it's so ugly mm -hmm. it, it's this 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 and 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 it, it flipped for me when i was saying both hearing mm -hmm. the billy eilish singing what was i made for and this 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 you know what all barbie wants to do is be able to feel and be real which i'm also i mean we talked about that a little bit the enough is is a is a is a is a complicated thing but the opposite thing of i mean the the horror that that the choice mothers were given of here you you can choose to have your child or you can choose to go to college it's your choice mm -hmm. and you know so that means you kill your child and go to college college better be worth it everybody who went to college from you know in the 90s having grown up with mm -hmm. that yeah 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 i mean we didn't even have the same debt mechanisms here to incentivize it australia only monetized its college its university level education in the 90s the late mm. 90s and uh i've written about this but it was a conservative government that decided to monetize it. We, we Americanized purposefully, but the boomers never had to pay a cent for the university education. This may be very shocking to Americans, but people here could study three or four or five degrees without paying for it, as long as they were academically gifted enough to get the uh, uh, get into the course and to perform within the courses. So for us as Australians, we're looking at a generation that made that choice, not even because they had to pay a debt for their college education. Well, so this is this is the also horrible thing about it. It's like my generation. So when I went to college, it was I was a private university, but it was four or five thousand. I was I, the, the tuition was nothing mm -hmm. in comparison to the the yeah. the you know it's not <clears throat> the college the tuition now for college at the elite schools, which is what I was going to right all the elite schools. It is when I started teaching at the University of Chicago, it feels like it was. I don't even remember. It was like it was, it was modest in, in in certain things. It's 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 it, inflation <laughs> isn't even a reality. It's the 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 debt, the college debt that students are in now has been fueled by these 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 um, loans, these government loans that nobody can get out of now. Which they're sort of indentured to the government for the rest of their life because it can never pay them off. Those mm -hmm. are a thing of the '90s. Those are in, those those and yep. those swell the college okay. tuition here too. So it's 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 similar. People had to 
to pay to go to college in the United States before that, but the state schools were not that expensive and in-state school tuition was, was, you know, low for the residents of the state. And even the private schools weren't that expensive. I, you know, I, 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 yeah. So one, so what are the, so this is even more, this is even more horrifying yes. then that boomers literally didn't have any of these debt mechanisms and yet they've purposefully pushed their own children into this debt. Right. Right. And so the, the, the stuff that we see online, either about, you know, not, you know, forcing everyone to pay their college, you know, their college debt. Well, that was a suck, you know, the, you were sucked in by mm-hmm. the promise of these loans and then the universities, uh, mine included, because all of the elite schools took advantage of this. Everybody was affected by the, the loan structuring because it meant that they could t- charge more. And so the universities just, you know, kept and and the elite schools like the University of Chicago, and they all match their own tuition. The, the, the elite school tier has the same tuition. Some of them are a little higher, some of them are lower, but it's 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 made and they rose with the ability to be guaranteed payment by these these lo- these student loans. And it happened mm-hmm. over the the late nineties into the aughts. And and into now, right? So that debt is—it's a feature of the of the current generation. It's not my generation. We didn't have that kind of debt. Hmm. Okay. So then, this is horrifying because there's two problems. First, it's that the millennials were born by a generation that openly admitted that they decided to kill their children in order to go into college. Yeah, if they or progress their career. They could have if if they were do if they were getting abortions in the 70s in order to stay in college or the 80s. Yeah. Yeah. So they've made that decision and then because they haven't been able to deal with the reality of it, they have then essentially groomed their own children that they didn't kill to go ahead and do exactly the same thing, not just with the uh, abortion choice in order to progress, but uh, saddling them with debt on top of the abortions. Right. This explains millennial women perfectly. Yeah. This is this is the millennial generation's horror show that they're living through now. <clears throat> um. <laughs> Uh, what was I made for? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it's a it's a sad song in the context of, but it's like, why, right? You made me to be what yeah. president? President Bobby, pilot no, Bobby. Cried. Yeah, uh, Doctor Bobby, businesswoman Bobby. You got to earn that ticket. That well, and got. also, you know, it's like you, you, you. I made you to be this. You better be this. I didn't make you just to mm-hmm. be a stay-at-home mom. I didn't make you just to be a mother. I made you to be somebody, and 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 that that it's like that. I mean, so I and this is this is a sort of shock and horror to me because I've been watching it all along in my students, but I'm just, you know, it's like when I started teaching, I was twenty-nine. Um, and, uh, you know, so my students were born in, they were, they were, they were, they actually, they were born after 1973 cause they were, they were young enough, younger enough from me. But, um, I, sh- I, sh- well, I guess I, I'd say I sh- should have seen all of this, but I think I didn't know it all because my students show up, they do their work. They work really hard. They work really hard. Oh, yes, and they work really hard because to get into the elite schools, you have to have, and I have seen it over the, the decades as the, Uni- the University of Chicago has become more and more like ambitious in its recruiting, so they get more applications, which means we become more selective because we have more, the students work hard, like really, yeah. really, really hard. Mm. For what? It's a genuine right. question. Why are they working this hard? What is it that they want to achieve? What do they want? Like, what what is this? What is this uh, collegial process going to give them? 
that they don't have already because there has to be some kind of incentive and for a lot of <laughs> i mean for a lot of young women it's uh it's to fit in with the with the barbie land well it's it's to be wanted yeah yeah nobody wants you if you don't have a college education on a social level uh, it's a it's an interesting thing that i've observed in australia mm. actually um because of the egalitarianism that's here you know there's a, a, a american blogger she she visited australia and she was complaining on tiktok or something that men don't buy drinks for women here they expect the women to buy their own drinks it was just a interesting first impression and we were talking about this in the diner that the the mechanism here is that we've achieved total equality there's no class distinctions now there are no gender or sexual distinctions so women are treated as though they're supposed to be providers and protectors of themselves the millennial generation grew up in these dynamics right. also they're not raised to be women they're raised to be pseudo men they can do everything men can do um they don't have any uh they don't have need for men and to admit that you need men around you to help you is forbidden so i found when i've been talking to a lot of millennial australians that are really you know from from an australian background not from a migrant background uh when they're talking to people they have to have something going on professionally they have to have a career going on in order to validate themselves to potential partners right. even in an environment when no one wants to get married because the millennials don't want to get married and i had a conversation with a guy from syria yesterday which was fascinating too because he was even asking you know uh what's your impression here with all of this stuff i told him and he said you know i've i've been asking a lot of people too age range from 25 to 50 no one wants to marry he said they don't want women they don't want to deal with the moods of women he said i'm sorry to put it like this but this is how they right. describe it they don't want to deal with the hormones so the men don't want to wake up and have to deal with the woman's moods i said oh that's interesting so they want to be in a relationship with another man and he said you know i could see it laughing <laughs> they don't want women and he said and then they think about the money you know spending money for the children and the wife and buying the house or renting the house or whatever and he said most of these guys they said we don't want to wake up next to the same face every day we want to change every six months every 12 months and we don't want to spend money for kids why what's what's it going to give us so they're not interested in marriage the girl uh who was kind of overhearing the conversation she's 19 years old she's a zoomer and she said it's worse in my generation mm. she said the girls are worse than the boys Nobody's interested in even a relationship, let alone talking about marriage. So it dropped to me yesterday why I'd horrified so many young women that I'm talking to here when I say to them, avoid the the hookup culture and find your husband right. now. They won't even look they won't look me in the eye now that I've said that to them. If you break the wall of silence around this boomer setup that everyone's living in, which is a living hell, people can't look at you because there's too much pain and there's too much shame involved in saying, what the hell are we all doing here? And the women have been essentially made to be pseudo men because <laughs> nobody wants them as women. Well, so the women are made as pseudo men, but the men aren't men because- No, the men aren't men. Because they're not, they're they're not, not fathers. They're not, they're not taking responsibility. They're not, it's, it's like when you, we talked about last time with Ken, right? On the one hand, we very sympathize, I mean, sympathize, the great, I, like the, the Ken song is really good. We need to talk about that. But yeah. the, we're still in Billie Eilish's Ken. song right now. What was I made for, oh, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. The, yeah. the um, you know, feel, feel sorry for the men because they, they're under the same horrible horror right mm. i it's like the no i i i could have i could have had a daughter if i hadn't killed you you know i could you had you i ch you know i could have chosen a better one right the the sort of yep. w denying that we do sex selection if you're making those sorts of choices as a, as well as eugenics right since it is actually i mean yeah. the, the 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 choices you're put through are 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 you know 
it's socioeconomic? Is it going to be good for you? Is it, you know, it, 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 they do, they screen you with tests to say whether or not you have likelihood of genetic defects. And so, you know, do you want an abortion if you, if you have that and all of that, I mean, the men are subject to it too. So, you know, poor men. Um, and mm -hmm. That, but with the added thing of which I did really appreciate in the in the way Ken played out the patriarchy is, you think I can do things, right? And I, I, I it's it mystifies me as a very accomplished, very intelligent woman. Guys, stop! Social Galactic keeps seeming to think sometimes that I'm not who I am. Right? <laughs> I'm, I'm really confused by this, right? Yes, I'm Christian. <laughs> Then yes, I am who I am, and on unauthorized, and I say so. That you know, the the I don't like that women are being d d put up in spite of men. That makes no sense to me. It has I, I you know I have a brother. I don't I don't see that I need to bash him in order to feel good about myself. That's ridiculous. But how can sisters and brothers not be angry about this from both directions? Of course, mm. many of us don't have sisters and brothers because the choices are made to have only one, right? Uh, so you know, there's yes. there's there's even yeah. not that sex sex relationship dynamic which Ken and Barbie had but never admitted. Right? Mm. <laughs> we're so <laughs> we're not going to let this culture off the hook because it's, no, it's, no, it's, not at all. It's done it. <laughs> it's done it. Never mind. It's like calling people names when they've been trapped in this dragon's coils is cruel well it's and it, not it's, christian right we we, got, we have to call out the sin and say this is the trap that people have been drawn into they've fallen into it it's hurt their souls it's hurt our culture it's hurt families it's hurt the world and yeah i mean well the script the scriptures say try train up a child in the way that he will go and when he's old he won't depart from it how how are you supposed to explain to people like oh uh, there's this I'll, I'll give you i'll give you an example of this right it was really funny there's a there's an article in the newspaper yesterday about papua new guinea right papua very interesting hotspot of tribal conflict and at the moment they're all running around in literal street battles tribe versus tribe killing each other they are famous there's for having more languages on papua new guinea than anywhere yeah. else i wonder why <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Nobody well, gets along with each other right now. <laughs> Nobody likes Papuans. Papuans don't like Papuans. <laughs> All eight hundred languages. So <laughs> exactly. So they're they're in this kind of like uh, tribal frenzy right now, and they're asking for help. And you know they're appealing to Australia, please come and help us with peacekeeping. And they're appealing to China, please help us with peacekeeping, etc. It's like well. I'm sorry if you guys can't keep peace. Why? Why are we going to help you? We can't keep peace in a, amongst ourselves. But I was thinking about this. Uh, a lot of people are going to read this article and say, "Oh, these stupid savages" or whatever. The thing is, this this is kind of a picture for me of the tribal dynamics that get set into a generation. Millennials are the same. They're they're like this weird post boomer, post Ralph V Wade tribe. That's their culture. They're not. Christians. Millennials are not Christians in, in Australia. I don't know what it's like in America, but here they're not. They've had no religious education whatsoever. They're allergic to religious conversations. Their parents have raised them maybe with some nominal Christianity in the background. Mm. If they were lucky enough to go to a Catholic school, God helped them. They got Catholicism gruel edition. You know, it was like, please, sir, can I have some more? <laughs> yeah, you might have a little bit of religion at the end of the, the, the day or something. Nothing vigorous. There's been no... Um, uh no no strong drive to give any of the millennials here their uh their true ethnic inheritance in terms of the wogs even. right so i watched all of this going on um when i was growing up looking at all of the 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 aussie aussies seeing how they were going off the deep end boomer spawn they are exactly the same as the boomers and so thirsty for the approval of that generation that they conformed to become an exact replica of them in every way possible, mm. which makes more sense now after what you've said. But even with ethnic communities here, they're looking uh, they're looking at the outside cultures 
wondering how they're supposed to assimilate into all of this or remain the second class, you know, backwards wogs that have these awkward grandparents with their strange ideas about how you do things between boys and girls. And, you know, uh, you know, grandma had a, uh, like a, a family where she was one of si 16 siblings and the husband didn't want her to work. And they're all very embarrassed by that. So of course they give birth to these millennial kids and they say, oh no, we're in Australia now, follow the Australian mm -hmm. culture. Let's completely destroy them too. They don't know who they are anymore. They're making ethnic comedy on Instagram and it's all referring to their grandparents. When I found this, I was so excited because I thought, now we're getting somewhere. Yeah. The wogs in Australia, the millennial wogs, they know something is wrong. They've lost what they needed in order to have the same culture that gave them the grandparents that they love and that they're grieving. And these kinds of women will no longer exist because boomer parents gave them uh, this modernity slot right. and said, assimilate with it. This is the good thing. This will get you ahead. You'll get money. You won't be dependent on anybody. You can be like the, the Anglos. You can be like the whites. So in terms of like millennial demographics here, yeah, that's the way it looks. It's like you've got this split in the country between the, 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 the Aussies who've set their children up for perpetual boomerism and the wogs that are, uh, they're grieving and they can't say it out loud because you don't want to upset anybody and say, actually, your culture is shit. We don't want it. We don't want to assimilate with it. We're going back. We want to be. Uh, we want to be, wog grandmothers and wog grandfathers again. And they don't know how to make it happen because everybody's just uh, so damaged by all of the the social programming. The women have all been told to be promiscuous, to get abortions, to get college debt. They don't know how to reverse it. Nobody knows how to reverse any of right. it. What I find most horrifying about this doc is that it's millennial men then turning to the women of their own cohort, you know, their own generation, and savagely attacking them and saying it's all your fault. Yeah, the, so what you're just this the civil war between the of the members of the generation yeah. because they're they're trapped. Yeah. They're all trapped and they're attacking each other. It's like convicts in a prison camp. Yeah. You're all in a concentration camp and you're attacking each other instead of looking at the fencing and thinking about who put that fence around all of you. And it works. Because they're still in hookup culture. I know people that hate this place that have, you know, proper Mediterranean backgrounds and a Mediterranean consciousness, and they're still on dating apps, swiping every weekend, mm -hmm. banging women from their own ethnic group, ruining them, and then complaining about the fact that there's mass migration here. So I don't let anyone off the hook. Like, the problem with our generation is that nobody's willing to say we're all broken and ruined by the boomer boomonomics that we were uh <laughs> we were made for we were made this is it this is what, we were, made what for. were you made yeah. for and that that in, instead of yeah. and so there's a human beings make things in two ways we make things as artifacts and we have babies right and then the, the, the fancy way of saying this so I, one of my favorite uh, books ever. Do you think I write hard books? This, this is even better. Um, Carl Morris's I Am You, which is interesting since we're talking about identity to the sort of em uh -huh. empathy and identity. And it's the he, the empathy in, West, in the Western tradition. I hear what his subtitle was, but it's I Am You, right? And he has this, okay. this very interesting meditation on the tension between aesthetic and organic reproduction, right? Aesthetic production and organic reproduction and, and the tensions between making and birthing and, 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 you know, it's like or the organic life that we have. I think, I mean, one of the things I'm also, I've also been thinking about is how amazing life is. And I'm, I've, mm -hmm. I've been thinking about that with, well, with respect to the dog I have now, which you all know I have a dog because I, I did a little episode on dogs and Tolkien. <laughs> and, um, the first litter that I chose the puppy from all the bad puppies died. This was two and a half years ago. All the puppies died. And so the next time I got to choose a litter of a dog from the, the breeder and said, I want, you know, this dog, don't chop his tail off. Um, it was like, but will he live past the first week? Because the other puppies hadn't. And then I'm like, all life is like this. And it's like, we'd say, oh, yeah, dogs, dogs die. We worry more about their dog dying than whether or not 
women are taking those pills so that they can kill that little spark of something that we didn't put together from rocks and mud and whatever else we make stuff from. We mainly make the stuff from rocks, right? We grind it up and turn it into concrete and plastic and, you know, rock, rock, rock. So either we're rocks, we're silicon or we're mud and we're, and we're alive. But the life is really, really precious. It's hard to be alive. Most things yeah. aren't. And then when you start looking, it's like whether or not you're going to be able to get food because of the way they're doing, you know, face tracking on stuff. It's like you can't eat most things. You can't eat rocks. The, 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 right. stuff, the stuff that actually is life for us is precious and rare. And, yeah. and we're out here in desert water too, right? And, and all the, 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 the degree to which it's like, oh, no, you can make a life for yourself by going to the city and having a career. And you don't who, – who, why would you waste your time with babies? I've heard I have I have heard it one I think I talked about this one graduation lecture that or talk we had two or three years ago at the UFC and the the professor the female professor was saying you know you know why waste your time changing diapers it's like well a because they don't wear diapers for the rest of their life and b it's a human being you pick up after yeah. your dog up for 20 years if you're lucky 15 <laughs> yeah. years right you change diapers for a year or two maybe and you're going to say you're going to say that's mm -hmm. less precious than taking care of the cat poop. It, it's like this this whole blindness of what's actually not just real, but or valuable. It, it's deeper than that. Right. And, and I think what you said, what are they what, meaning? Yeah. Right. It's a, and, and that's what that's what Barbie says at the end. I want to be the one who makes meaning rather than one who is meaning projected onto. I want to be alive. I mean, that's the other thing. It's like, what was mm -hmm. I made for? I want to be alive. I don't want to be a doll that you made so that you could have this doll career and, 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 and you know, be, I want to be a human being. And th that's entirely what the Barbie movie is saying. Yeah. Yeah, it is. Uh, oh, and, uh, and also I think revealing exactly how difficult it is for the Barbies to look around them and find the fathers of the children that they really want. It's very, very difficult. In, uh, in, the, in the context of the film, you know, everybody was cheering Ken on, and I, I, I love Ken. But the difficulty is that Ken does nothing. Ken is the millennial man. And he's ineffective because he is... I mean, he's grown up around women that are, uh, they're, they've been raised to be Wonder Woman. They can do everything mm -hmm. except for, be, they can do everything except for be vulnerable. And that defines a millennial woman. So, uh, of course, because they've been adjusted and augmented to become pseudo men, what is a relationship with a Barbie? A relationship with a millennial is a relationship with a Barbie. It's sterile. Right. It's uh, it's it's anti-creative because she still has to do everything. The men are uh, looking at the these millennials that they're calling girl bosses and hating on, not realizing that they're in, in obedience to the demands of the generation that created them. And even if they want to leave the hellscape, they're wandering around a world where all of the boys are still stuck in Kendom. Uh, which is like a, a strange con contrast between um, useless toy boy mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, a, a really a aggressive misogyny in response to the fact that they've grown up being told that they don't need to do anything. Um, this is a kind of painful lesson for that generation too. A lot of the men, even now when they say, oh, okay, well, we're going to go to the gym. Okay, go to the gym. Does that make you a good father? Th there's been no generational push to raise millennial boys to accept the responsibility that would allow them to create cultures that they came from. So like in terms of uh, what we make now with rocks, I mean, everybody's obsessed with it because I don't think that they, they're willing to admit that they don't know how to make families. Right. They don't know how to make the culture that they were born, they, they were born from. They've rejected their own culture. It's a very painful thing to admit. 
uh, I get very lippy about it here. But, I mean, the the kind of phenomenon of wog comedy, if anybody wants to check it out, because it's a thing. It's been a thing since the 80s here. Wog comedy is like the 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 historical tracking of the Mediterranean experience of the country and how they would make fun of the people making fun of them for being too ethnic. And it has it disappeared for about 10 years and it's coming back because the millennials are mm. realising what they gave up. But, uh, I mean, we're, we're hitting, like, uh, the Great Depression in terms of the ability for women to run this track any further. We don't have another generation in us. We can't do this. The, the Zoomers are not going to be able to carry this and, and, and stay sane. They're already cracking. Well, from what I know of Zoomers who, you know, some of whom I teach, it's the uh, the, the great thing about being a university professor is you, you get to see, you know, the same age over and over and over again, except you can see how they change. Yeah. And the the ones the zoomers in college now what they are they're hopeful in a certain way cuz they're kind of quirky and if they if they if they mm. show me stuff if I they know. show me stuff like they, they they one of one of my students this, this past year was showing me some some memes that she liked and I'm like I don't get it I I I I, I have <laughs> no idea why this is so funny for you and the the absurdist is so powerful in what they're looking at. It's like it's like there's no meaning in it. It's it's more there is reference, right? They like it because it references this other thing, and that's delightful for them. But I think they're in this. Yeah. We saw that we had that um, article that Milo had about the spiders who were given different substances. You know, oh yeah, <laughs> the caffeine, the caffeine web, and the LSD web, and the marijuana web, and and the the zoomers are there. Mm -hmm. They're kind of the caffeine web. It's like there was no pattern, but it was like energetic. <laughs> yeah, that's actually very accurate. <laughs> They're trying. It's They're trying. Web. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what we, you know, we, we, we mini Xers or you know, mini Zers, whatever we were Xers, right? The, the 70, the 65 to 73 Xers, we were, we're, we're, we're kind of on the edge of the, the experimental, um, you know, uh, altered states, the sort of webs, right? We're, oh, we're yeah. still, still looking for meaning. It was just <laughs> explains a little bit why I play with, you know, tarot and patterns and medieval history and liturgy and poetry um so we were we were still there with the possibility of connected meaning whereas the the, the stuff that the, the 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 z's are showing me is fun but disconnected yes Although yeah. it is fun, so that's good, and and it doesn't seem to be as affected by some other things because there's I mean they're so out the other side of of skepticism <laughs> yeah they don't believe anything <laughs> well uh and i i mean to be fair among the catholics in in chicago at least there's a lot of them are getting married and there's a lot of families and stuff like that but that's a you know it's a subset of this generational thing that we're describing but so i you know i, I continue to take hope from from you know the hints in barbie of the frustration with this structure, I mean, that Gloria ends up saying, why can't we just be mm -hmm. a mom? And, you know, I think that's that's why that's there. It's like we do want to be mothers, which we talked about, you and I talked about a few weeks ago. Um, yeah. And, but we want to, you know, I think also they want to not be constantly having to make the things because they want to be mothers. They want to take care of their children, which is life, which is different from structuring stuff out of rocks. It, I mean, that yes. joke about how the kins can't build a wall and, you know, they're, they're building this straight up wall. It's like actually men can build things and that would be great if they were building things. And that being the point yeah. of they can't, they should be building things. And women should be, as we've talked about, making beautiful stuff and creating life in all in like, yes, ladies, you need to be able to write poetry because your children need language skills in order to be fully human human to have language skills oh, yeah. <laughs> guess well, what <laughs> dogs don't talk cats don't talk either right <laughs> um 
horses might. I'm, the jury's still out on my horses. Are you going to go but, Gulliver uh, on me and 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 go hang out with the queen? Maybe. I I may. I it just it depends on the state of the millennial kids. <laughs> <laughs> what are we going to just beat the I'm, yahoos? I'm, I've I've made preparations for a life uh, out on the open plain <laughs> with a horse, very low stress. <laughs> um, but I saw the I saw the stats. They just re- they they just released stats in Australia too. There's like, like one third of the the Australian students can't read or write to to a literate level. Mm. I mean, this is this is a a direct uh, effect of millennial women being in the workforce millennial and gen x and boomer women being in the workforce they're literally if not teaching their time. own children to read yes yeah. yes yes and they've outsourced this process to strangers right which i mean you know, it's not a condemnation we understand we're living in the boomonomics world if you don't have grandparents at home taking care of grandchildren you're not going to have anyone to supervise uh thus the daycare center phenomenon but essentially, when you're giving your own children to daycare centers when they're in their primary linguistic development stage, they're not growing up with the dialect of their own culture. They're growing up with imported strangers that are teaching right. them that have no dominance or fluency or uh, uh, skill with the, with the mother tongue, you know. So if you're giving your children to people that can't even speak your language in their private, you know, prime time of linguistic development and then expecting them to suddenly uh be able to form you know a a richness of 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 dialect and cultural understanding it just makes no sense everything has been uh everything has been turned into rock building even the children Mm -hmm. they're just unit you know they're just uh they're just offloaded into uh daycare centers because it's a supervision that's required but it's not building culture it's actively destroying our cultures um again what do you do do you insult the women that are caught in these positions (laughs) knowing that they've been shackled with this college debt or do you maybe try and talk about a different way of moving forward out of this hell but the uh I think the the best thing about being a woman is that you get to think about all of these things and actually be the be the 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 generator of culture in your community in your in your environment um the the going back to the wog comedy thing all of these young people here that have realized what they're missing is mocking their own grandparents Mm -hmm. but they're grieving because they don't have these people around them anymore to interact with that culture has died at the altar of uh, um, the woman's career because the women were were made to feel silly for wanting to be like the the nonna or the yaya yeah yeah and just to be staying home cooking and talking and yelling at people and and that kind of thing uh but what it did was it gave everybody the basis for their uh their brilliance later on in life it's just not valued. Um, so yeah, we need poetry. We need we need poetry. We need women that are able to speak beautifully to their own children, or they are they're going to pick up their their language from uh, from corporations called daycare centers or robots. What? So the chat the the, yeah. the chat is making a very good point. Fat saying some men now want to make women out of rocks, robots, right? <laughs> and robot wives. So we're just going to yeah. be rocks. Metallurgy and sex magic yeah. that we talked about in the magic episode. Yeah. So they're, you know, like we want hum- w- yeah. women as rocks and then, yeah. And, and, and fat scene. In fact, people already have AI chatbot girlfriends. Mm-hmm. Yes. Mortloaf bear, Bartaria. I'm, I want you guys to go to the fudge factory and po- post pictures. Mm-hmm. So uh, the other thing we were doing alongside listening to the Barbie song and I'm, I'm missing out. So I do want to talk about the Ken song, the Ken song. Um, okay. And oh, that's the gesture that I needed. So the other song that I was really struck by was the one that she sings while she's driving out of Barbie Land. Right? She's going to go, and it's um, Indigo Girls. Is that right? Uh, the original yeah, song. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Uh, Fine. There's fine in the title. What's the title? What's the word? I went on my way to fine. On my way to fine. Okay. I think. Yeah. Yeah. 
You gonna I sing it for you? I went to the doctor. I went to the mountain. Something, something. Da, 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 I went the to the fountain, children. Blah, blah. I went to the I fountain. The lyrics. Okay, no. So the, we we know from our poetry practice that fountain and mountain are pretty much the only thing that rhyme with each other. <laughs> so if you have a mountain, you're gonna yes. have a fountain. <laughs> Which is we feel you, in the, we, Indigo we feel girls. You. It's like you're yeah, you're kind of stuck with that. But the doctor is interesting because it's like you went to the doctor. Why? And of course, it, because I heard that song, I didn't know it was an Indigo. I didn't know the song. Um, everybody in the audience seemed to, oh, yay, that song. Uh, I thought she meant going to the physical doctor, right? The gynecologist doctor. But in fact, it's going to who? Mm -hmm. You knew this. I mm. did. Because I have a doctor. <laughs> yeah, me. But I don't have a beard. Or I'm a picture of Rasputin. Exactly. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, no, they mean the PhDs. Yeah. And they sp specifically, yeah. it's like the prostrate before the higher mind, four years prostrate before the higher mm -hmm. They're so interesting. Like, this, is, this is a lament of the generation that was told they had to go to college in order to be meaningful. They went, they talked to these. I mean, it's interesting. The professor has a beard and t he never had kids. He had never saw a B movie. I spent four years prostrate to this higher mind. What does it mean? Right. And I think the I don't I don't really know what the full song is in the in the sense of I don't know what all of the other parts mean. I'm thinking it's like I went to the mountains. I went to the great works. I went to the the fountain of culture and stuff. I, the children, I guess you go and it's like, who who are we going to learn from who we are, what we mean? And obviously they picked that song nicely to go with Barbie driving out of Barbie land of where, where college has failed. And and this is this is this is not only is it failed because it's not come through with the promise of oh if you get you know put yourself into debt this way you're going to be able to buy your way into a new social status which was the the game right it's like we need to do diversity yes. and affirmative action because everybody needs to be you know into the next higher social class and then they've just you know enslaved everyone either killed the children or enslaved the ones that did survive and. Nobody can scan either <laughs> that you, you, you went to the mountain, you went to the doctor, you went to the children, you went to the fountain and nothing means anything. Good job, higher education. <laughs> I feel personally affronted being in the business. Right? And, and my grandmother, <laughs> who I can tell you stories about, was also, you know, she was a classics teacher. She was an English teacher. You know, I have a lot of teachers in my family. This, this, you were supposed to learn something in school. You were supposed to learn about beauty. You yeah. were supposed to learn about truth. You were supposed to learn about goodness. What didn't they teach you? You've mm -hmm. been robbed. Yeah. Yeah, we got hustled. Man, I'm mad. Mm -hmm. Of course, I've been trying all these years to teach somebody something. They come to me in my classes, right? And I, yes, I'm at the elite school, and that's where I... But the elite schools matter because we're the ones that trickle down into everybody else, right? And so whatever nonsense yes. is coming out of Berkeley is going to hit you in 10 years. And it got there, right? Thanks, Ju yeah, Judith. <laughs> Judith Butler is at Berkeley, right? She went from rhetoric to there's no gender, right? Or, you know gender spectrums and stuff like that. Thank you so much, mm -hmm. Professor of Rhetoric. You talked your way out of reality. Well, this is how your this is how your elite academies uh, are operating as cultural colonialism too. Yes. And and like sucking we, we all the children access. into them so that they can all become part of this yeah. elite culture and 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 yeah. you know, vending machine. We had that that's the last time I drank a lot of sodas when I was in college and I drank all the Diet Dr. Peppers out of the, <laughs> the you know, it's like the, you have the vending machines <laughs> literally there in your dorm to feed you the mm -hmm. syrup that is you know gonna it's like th that's a bee kind of image, right? You're gonna be fed drone bee syrup. Drone, drone yes. honey. It's like, yeah, they feed the bees, and only a few of them get to be queen bees that they're fed, feed, fed queen jelly, right? And the rest of them turn into workers. Mm. <laughs> I wasn't even so planning that like, one. <laughs> no, I know. And as you're describing it, I start feeling panic because it's like this terrible sci fi, and you know, something's going on, but actually, it's not a sci fi, it's just real it's life. It's just real life. <laughs> well, and it's it's what e. Michael Jones well, says about alien, right? That the alien was all about this anxiety over abortion. 
because the the mothership mm-hmm. and, and you know the mom's having to fight and you aren't going to kill my babies but the that sort of horrible thing that attaches itself in this faux pregnancy that bursts out of his chest and it's like this horror of what pregnancy is being you're being told pregnancy is like that right that it's this bursting out of you and destroys mm-hmm. you and your body and isn't it evil to you know to have something attach itself to you and try to live off of you and stuff um yeah. well the, yeah uh I, I mean the 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 higher education process like whatever happens in berkeley spills out here 10 years later but for us to enter into this we don't get to influence it it influences mm-hmm. us uh as um I mean, in terms of like the, the 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 diversity, it's not. What they're doing is they're pulling in talent from different cultural groups and then enculturating them, cultural whatever the word is. You know, they're making them. They're, I'm going to stick uh, with this. They're feeding them drone jelly, or not the the, the queens. Yeah, the queens get the queen jelly, them, and the drones yeah. get whatever keeps them sexless. Yeah, they're keeping they're keeping them sexless and giving them drone jelly, uh, and uh, and then they come back out into their communities and. Uh, they don't really know what to do anymore because they're they've been alienated from their home culture. Mm-hmm. They think they know better, but it's just because they've got a hundred thousand dollars in debt that's telling them that they know better. I mean, it's a really cruel trick. Yep. And then, uh, you know, the it's it's been happening over and over and over and over again. So, I mean, uh, I was. I'm thinking as you're talking about this, like this d- description of pregnancy, you know. Uh, to to go through that process and then come back into a folk culture and say uh, criticize criticize everything you've been taught in a higher education environment and say okay actually what this is is uh, it's uh, it's the white supremacy that everybody is railing and trying to fight actually mm-hmm. this is what it is. You're you're bleaching folk culture to create this yep. like, dr- sterile drone class to operate a bureaucracy and live in your little behalf. cells like in in Barbie, right? They have to you have to operate drone guys working in the yeah. corporate office and their drone beehives. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and then uh, of course the presence of pregnancy in drone worlds is horrifying because suddenly things are not measurable and they're not uh predictable and it gets very messy because pregnancy makes a woman behave like a woman suddenly she can't she's no she's no longer in control of uh of her body mechanically the same way she was when she was taking all of those little pills to turn her into a pseudo man right. uh and and so everybody sort of celebrates it but at the end of the day it's uh it it can't be celebrated in that environment because it's an admission that there's something that was, uh, it's an admission that there's something that is out of control, which is uh, good for culture and terrible for bureaucracy, terrible for people that are in in drone world that are trying to behave, to be acceptable to this uh, bureaucratic um, way of doing things. So they're just lying to women constantly about what it's like uh in terms of um what you need to do in order to be acceptable and beautiful and everything that gets you know propagandized to young women in my generation Mm -hmm. uh places of the planet women are spoken to completely differently and this is where i have my you know my own personal experience of being in foreign foreign cultures that weren't uh wasp tarted to the point of sterility that wasp uh, is now some, men... somewhat more meaningful isn't it the, in, the it insect is. life it is. incest <laughs> <laughs> no honey no honey no honey in there one uh, queen no yeah the, yeah well uh, women are spoken to differently they're spoken about differently um the idea of uh being in a family is spoken about differently mm. where this higher education machinery hasn't hijacked a culture you find that people are actually much happier they're the young women are much happier because they haven't gone through this boomer boomonomic uh grinding machine 
to get them ready to start breaking rocks and making things out of rocks. Yeah. So, yeah, it, it's a good metaphor you've come up with because it fits with the Minecraft dynamics that we've been discussing in the global right. south too. Uh, women women are told to go off into the mines instead of stay home and create cultures and families and communities and everything. Uh, and this is just a, a it's a higher education thing. It it it, it is unacceptable for the millennial generation to get degrees and then abandon the debt and say, all right, I'm not going to use this. I'm just going to stay home. Mm-hmm. Well, so it's, and I mean, it's higher, edu- higher, edu- it. it's like higher education. Uh, this, the, the, uh, well, okay. Mm-hmm. The irony of all of this is the point about getting prestige off of higher education was it was a high skill. Right. And, and the problem with right. true prestige off of skills is there's going to be a pyramid because some people are going to be really good at it and most people are not going to be. And so you can't buy it. You can't buy that kind of prestige because it's competitive. And, and so it's yeah. a lie, right? The, the promise of, uh, and this is, I mean, it's, it's, it's always been a problem with higher education. Adam Smith was, was talking about how there were too many people with liberal arts degrees that wanted jobs and, you know, they couldn't find them. That was the night, that was, the enlightenment's been with us all along, right? <laughs> um, but the, the sort of mm-hmm. premise of prestige and status is it's competitive. But if what you would do mm-hmm. is guarantee that everybody gets it, it, it like, it, it cancels each other out. And so, yes, what, what higher education turned into was, creating sameness, creating, creating the, the, the drone world of the, the working in your cells in your little cubicle cells. And, um, ironically ended up, you know, robbing the people that were able to be skilled at things of being able to be skilled at things. It, it's, it's, I'm very frustrated with my profession. Mm. Mm. I, and well, to be fair, I was in the '80s too. I was writing about this in high school, in college, <laughs> because once you start using the prestige, the 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 um the skills training as credentialing, you cre- you break it. And we knew that, and we mm. knew, I mean, people have certainly known it longer than I did, but I knew it in the '80s when I was in college. Well, it's a it's a self re- reinforcing uh, prison cell because if, if you if you if you're if you're wanting to achieve something that can only be achieved through competitiveness, you get it. Okay, for example, like everyone's got a degree now, great, everybody's got the status, but then you have to work to maintain it. Uh, the degree doesn't. It, it's it's not like people graduating and then just going home. They know that they have to compete to retain that status they've just purchased. Right, but the, but the thing is, they, okay. it's like it's so like, we we have a nice we have a super chat. Bishop says your chats are a window into the feminine soul. We hope it's not too terrifying. Uh, very helpful yeah. as I have only brothers. Well, we're happy to be here, <laughs> trying to talk this out for everyone because as we've been saying, it's like they're lying to all of us. The 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 sort of premise of the equality is is a lie for all of us and it hurts both men and women yeah yeah my 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 conversation yesterday uh really hit home however the difficulty now i mean outside of the uh the niche internet world where everybody discussing this and everybody wants their tribe wives and everybody hates the girl bosses okay but in reality mm. where the rest of the human race live what we have now is a millennial generation with women who are in debt who have been raised to perform for the boomers like little trick ponies that didn't get murdered mm-hmm. so they have to they have to earn their life yeah they have to earn being alive by being productive and f- performing and being good at something instead of just being alive, you know, like it's a, it's a huge psychological burden to carry. They don't at the same time have like an entire chat room of people running up to them every day saying, quit your job, stay home and have some kids. I'll take care of you. This is not what's going on in normie world outside right. of like the extreme dissident, whatever it is here, like on the fringes of conversation, most women that I know, that are in the same generational like post row wave 
kind of like slot, they wake up and they have guys saying, what do you do for a living? Mm -hmm. Do you own your own place? How much do you earn? Let's go out. We can split the bill. Their sense of being taken care of has been annihilated. So if a woman has had her sense of being taken care of annihilated, how is she then going to conceptualize taking care of children? How is she going to do this when she doesn't have anyone taking care of her as a woman while she cares for children? This is so terrifying. And I don't think a lot of young men understand this. The level of vulnerability that a woman takes on just getting pregnant, let alone being a mother, having like the responsibility of the children afterwards. But from the moment a woman is knocked up, anything can happen. So this whole generation, this whole millennial cohort of girls are shamed into admitting vulnerability in order to perform in these jobs that they've been pushed into. Mm -hmm. They cannot admit they cannot admit a need for dependence. It's forbidden. And the boomers would not let have, would not let millennials say, I need help. I can't do this. I am not able to do President Barbie. I can't be Pilot Barbie. I can't handle this. I just want to be Mum Barbie. That was impossible. So they're all in a psychological mode where they're unable to admit a need for dependence on men and at the same time surrounded by Kens that have absolutely no concept of what it's like taking responsibility for another. They're used to independent Barbies. They're used to getting free attention from independent Barbies. And so once, for example, if you say to somebody, actually, I don't want to work. Uh, I just want to depend on somebody. I want to depend on a man. The response is fascinating. You're, you're mocked. You looked at like you've got a psychological disorder mm. as a millennial. What? You want to depend on a man? Are you nuts? Well, of course you're nuts. There are no men. <laughs> no one is willing to say, I will take you and I will carry you and you can be responsible for the little people and I'll be responsible for you. Right. That's the dynamic of the generation. No amount of ideological like uh, trolling or hating on women or like the ridiculous misogyny that we see in, in the chat rooms is going to fix this dynamic. If men don't start hazing each other into a level of responsibility where they carry these women, the girls will not drop the reins. They're not going to change leads. It's difficult. If you've got a horse that is moving diagonally and it doesn't know what it means to move straight and you start hitting it and kicking it too quickly, you'll, ha you'll have what happened to me last mm -hmm. night where I almost got thrown off a horse three times. You cannot work with animals that have been broken in badly and expect them to behave according to these like ideological rule sets that you're not even willing to follow because you don't have the capacity to do it yet. So like, I'm really into this horse metaphor and I'm glad that it kind of linked in with where you are and I'm looking at them in the background mm. because you think that it's the horse's fault. It's just bad education. A horse, like in the, in the, in the horse world, they say they're educated. Mm -hmm. A horse is educated to do what it does. If a horse is badly educated, beating it is not going to fix it. It's not going to fix it. Insulting that horse is not going to fix it. You can't ride. That's your problem. Right. It's not the horse's problem. The millennial women are badly educated by being hyper-educated and put into debt. That's not their fault. So the only thing that I've been able to see as like an outcome of our meditations on this so far is the boys have to step up. They really have to step up and realize that what they're dealing with are a bunch of terrified mares that have been broken in badly and can't walk straight. Why? Because it's scary. Because if you walk straight, you're you're out of the you're out of the norm. You know, everyone's so used to going diagonally, they can't see that it's wrong. That yes. And the moment someone starts walking straight, people freak out. What are you doing? Why are you doing that? So uh, it's well, just... I'm happy to report that we got another super chat. So we're 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 we're, we're helping. We're helping. Mort Fair says top not top not stream. Very entertaining and interesting. Well, we will, we 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 endeavor to carry on. <laughs> so when 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 you're talking yeah. there, I'm thinking this is again why in the Barbie movie we we, we talked about how you know the, the the therapy feeling thing is part of it. But saying that one of the things the women who wrote this movie 
and worked on it together are talking about is they want to be able to feel. And that's what mm -hmm. what Ruth Handler gives Barbie yeah. the choice of can you feel and and the things that Barbie feels. I mean, what she sees in that if if that is the Billie Eilish song playing in the background there is growing up, and and it's just sort of fuzzy children growing up sort of, yeah. of images. I I I thought that was a very weird montage, but because um, it didn't seem it to like fit anywhere, which is also poten potentially um, meaningful as like. Don't it's even kind know. Of the feeling of yeah, the, it's like what would yeah, I exactly. what would I feel if I if I could remember growing up? It's you know learning things from these growing mm -hmm. up things, and there's none of that, right? It's just like this inchoate. I need yep. to be able to to feel something, which we can mock and say it's all therapy. I mean, a lot of these people, I think you know the other thing that's happened, of course, is let's see, we've had the not dying because your your mother chose not to kill you option. We've had being put into debt because of. A, you know, a, a loan scheme that the universities use to rack up tuition to insane levels. And then we have being mm -hmm. medicated for everything, right? So <laughs> yeah. you're talking about the sugar yeah. that's, you know, that, that fudge sugar that, that you're going to be fed. The, who who got to feel anything at all? The Uranus, the Uranus fudge, Uranus right? It's like who, jelly. The, bo the boys don't get to be boys. And I mean, I do love the Ken song. I've got, I've, you know, I'm just keep listening to that. We got to talk about Ken song. Yeah. Um, uh, yes. that, you know, they want to ride on their little horses and have battles. And I mean, those kids are behaving mm -hmm. like they're seven and they should be able to behave like they're seven yeah. because that's what seven year old boys like doing, which is having, you know, mock battles and, you know, playing sports and such yeah. like that. So I think that's also accurate. It's like those boys are not old enough to be men yet. They, but they never got to be boys in the first place. So feel something, mm -hmm. the playing with dolls, right? It's like, it's ironic. Um, realizing that the the ba the girls bashing the baby dolls at the beginning when they see Barbie are the moms who chose abortion. They bash mm -hmm. their children. Here you go, you're dead. Yeah. Now I get to be career Barbie and and you know this this the horror of and and again I realized it's like I was born before that was the the reality. So s there's a difference in what it was like just growing up there was never any you know like my mom was in med school or had finished med school when i was born so there is a little bit of a career thing but then she stopped working while we were growing up so it's uh we were in that that dynamic but not the the abortion choice dynamic and and then the boys the you know whether you're medicated whether you can feel rambunctious and playful and want to you know have battles with the guys i mean that it's obvious i'm going to go to the kin song now the, <laughs> what they figure out in the course of that song is being boys together which is fine yes just boys and that that is yeah now i get to cry again because i feel sorry for the boys too <laughs> yeah yeah well, they got boomer shamed out of their masculinity. They got boomer shamed out of their the boyhood. Didn't do that, so they never even got to. Yeah. You know, it's like never get to the masculinity because you're being, mo you know, Homer Simpson mocked and whoever yeah. all the, you know, the the stupid dad mocking that's been going on for decades. Every I it was like when I occasionally watch like actual television and you and you see yet another ad for yet another product. I mean, the the advertising shaming of men has been going on for ages. Oh, you know, you're being silly. You would don't solve it that way. I've got this easier solution. So, you know, no, men can solve things. They can tell the time and make walls and design can stuff. <laughs> What's going on in your neighborhood? There's the there's the rooster crowing. <laughs> Ooh, the rooster crows Speaking as we speak. The rooster, the rooster has crowed yes it's very poignant <laughs> crow rooster crow do boy things build stuff fight with plastic horses <laughs> he's really going for it that's great <laughs> his name is elvis presley <laughs> bless his heart yeah i really hear him that's really funny yeah okay um, we've got the rooster agrees yeah 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 yeah, the, uh, the, they they have to just uh, they have to be boys. Yeah, which means a total rejection of anything that the boomers have uh, considered to be um, appropriate for boys. I think that would be a fair um, a fair thing to say. 
uh, the the sex roles were completely reversed in the um, the millennial generation. Boys had to be held back in order to create all of those Barbies. Right. Because women, women cannot compete against men in most fields. They just can't. We, we can't. can't. It's not going to happen. We cannot do it. The only we can't way even that we scan the way as we... well as they do. <laughs> Don't tell them that. We, we did a whole episode about that. <laughs> what men want they scan well, very I'm nicely happy because then at least I well I, then at, at least we know that if they do start doing their poetry we're going to get some very nice uh very nice stanzas out of it but uh which we will cruelly you know, it's, judge as we as as you've also made the point of we never. have to make you know it's like one be precious women value yourself i mean the 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 uh the the sense of Remember what Cher says about losing her virginity and how picky she is about her shoes. Be picky. Make them make mm -hmm. you good shoes because that you need to know that they're going to take care of you when you really need it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, the, I think the problem is that the millennial boys were held back in order to get the millennial women to succeed. So the millennial women are, are looking back at retarded people literally that, retarded as in held back yes oh, yeah. <laughs> yes slow yes, down yes. like if you tell the time yeah re, re, uh in retard it just means i'm late i'm retarded i've been delayed they've been delayed yep. they're, they're not at the level that they should be at their age and when they're approaching these women for hookups i mean they're approaching women that want children that want relationships everyone's just going along with everything and pretending it's all okay and they're having fun they're not having fun nobody's having fun <laughs> nobody likes it and the men don't like it either i, I i'm i'm grateful because i'm privy to some of the boys that tell me mm. what they're up to they tell me the truth they don't like it uh deep down yeah. but it's like what do you do to fix it you have to face your fear and actually get over this like millennial training that we've all been put through um and it sounds really harsh if you want to get out of the Barbie training and say, okay, I don't want to be like this anymore. I want to actually be a woman and I want to make culture and I want to be WOG again. Then you have to really admit that actually the terrifying reality is that you can't do that on your own and you need people that are willing to be around you to help you do it. How do you pick like Cher does, mm -hmm. you know? It's very, very difficult because... Millennial women are not virgins picking their first uh, first partner who's going to be the husband. They're picking from a, a cohort that's gone through boomification alongside yeah. them. There's no, there there are no virgins to pick from in a millennial cohort, but there are also no people that have unscathed. We've all been boomified to a degree, so. It's just you realize very, that that's very... in the Barbie movie too, when they're making their jokes about not having genitals. Mm hmm. Yeah. If only we, I mean, it's yeah. like, if only we didn't. If only we didn't. So that they could, I mean, it's like you could be virgin, right? You're not. Oh, yeah. Be virgin before you're married so that we weren't, you know. Sorry. <laughs> right. And and I don't like that idea. <laughs> it's like saying that, that you are bound to the people that you've slept with for the rest of your life. It doesn't matter if you never see them again. You are bound to all of them. Yeah. 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 In one way or, In one another, way or another, you're you bound to absolutely all of them. Andrew Tate is... Yeah. <laughs> However many he has, right? And so <laughs> Solomon and all his wives. No, you're not. You're not Solomon Tate. Um, that 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 when they have that conversation, like the one thing Barbie and Ken have. Well, one we've established their brother and sister, so that's creepy anyway. But they can't have had sex. So there's this other kind of like they're not even in the 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 same reality of of. I mean, he what they want to kiss and they don't know what it means. It's like there's a there's a there's a kind of desire longing sweetness for like what would it be that we went to parties and danced and that we just danced and it was fun and nothing happened after that 
because you're expected for yeah, there's see, something to happen, right? It's like I've I've gotten so sick of movies. Mm-hmm. I barely, you know, it's like now Piss and Boots is good. We can talk about that one. And the Shrek movies are good too. We can talk about, it's like the, the, when they don't do the sex and the thirty thing and end up in bed after one night, one, you know, one drink. Mm. I, there's, there's so much like d- longing to be children in the Barbie movie as well. Like, when did we get to be yeah. children? Well, my generation didn't, or at least we had a very, very, very short childhood. Yeah. A micro childhood. Yeah. Cuz Cuz you're supposed to be one of uh, you want to you're supposed to be doing, you know, um what are those the the, pa- the beauty pageants when they dress 6-year-olds up as 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 grown women. Yeah. Mhm. Yeah. Yeah. Pageantry. Yeah, you don't get to be tomboy. You don't get to be ugly and awkward or beautiful and awkward but just like completely uh, not conscious of the way you look and just doing your own thing. The the boomer generation, they wanted dolls. They wanted to have little mini versions of them, mini, mini women instead of children. Um, and everything, I mean, like as you're describing the <laughs> the parties, right? Uh, I don't know a time when I would go to a party and there was anything wholesome about that party. The parties that I was going to, they were already college level parties when I started going out. That's my generation's reality. Yeah. So so when she's like girls night every night, uh, it's, like, it's like just a slumber party? you're saying you didn't yeah. get those yeah. you didn't even get that we did right it's like the we we had girls parties which no. was no no we had garage parties but people were drinking doing drugs i mean like you know girls i went to school with they were getting pregnant trying not to get pregnant dealing with all of the adult issues all the boomer the boomer issues that have been put yeah. on them you got to make a choice now and that choice came earlier and earlier and earlier for that generation. Instead of it being an issue of someone who's 22, 23, suddenly it's 19, suddenly it's 17, suddenly it's 13. Yeah. Wow. Okay. So I grew up in that uh, social milieu. <laughs> um, what do you do? How do you dodge it? It's like running a gauntlet. You're surrounded by people that are set on this trajectory it's like growing up in papua new guinea you're part of a tribe what do you do you don't know anything outside of it it's 300 tribes they're all fighting no one comes in as a missionary and says you're you're disgusting savages what are you doing you know there's no like outside perspective and even where where we are where there should have been an outside perspective like world culture the grandparents everyone sat back and watched their children run off an anglo cliff Mm and follow the rest of them. So it, it happened to everybody. It happened to everybody. There were no trads. There were no trad Catholics. There were no trad Orthodox. It was just, uh, it was a war on life. Being a millennial was living a war on life. Mm. And then, of course, we've got Weird Barbie who's in her combat gear, but, you know, you're a combat vet- veteran of sexual right. liberation as a millennial yeah some of us more highly decorated than others (laughs) but everybody had to go through it everyone had to go through it and it's it's a very difficult thing to kind of describe you can't have these discussions with most boom they take it personally because they know they failed they failed their children they didn't give them the world that they grew up in uh, so millennials are stuck with no elderly uh, guidance at all. Mm. The horrifying realization of what they've been born into and raised to accept and perform in. And then how do you move forward? Yeah. Well, to answer what happened to the boomers, we're getting... oh dear. I'm sure I'm ready to do that one. <laughs> it happened in the 40s. Um, so uh fat is asking like what should the men do i know plenty of men who are terrified they will never be good enough to provide right and that's a kin enough thing i think 
get over it. Yeah, so My advice get is over get over it. it. So the, the kid, so what I kept hearing in the kid, yeah. one, it's like, we'll go, we'll just lighten up a little bit. Maybe... <laughs> bring them all completely down and they'll take them back up to fudge um <laughs> we'll get we'll get back i don't on. know you get back on the horse well you get back <laughs> you get back on the horse there you go um that i am conscious when i'm listening to the barbie soundtrack that it's a lot of club music i mean it's like it's club music of that generation great so mm-hmm. i wasn't you know i was yeah. teaching teaching yeah. people d- during all that time and not listening to that music um the Ken song, however, though, felt to me like it's echoing everything I grew up with, which I thought was really interesting. Mm-hmm. One that, you know, he they 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 scripted it really nicely with the the, the Sylvester Stallone's Rocky. I mean, I, 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 I kind of miss this, but there you go. It was the, the Italian stallion. So if he's like in horses, he's like <laughs> Rocky is the Italian stallion and wearing the fur yeah. coat and the the ninja. Yeah. The ninja <laughs> headband and um, that the music, I was asking my husband, um, you know, what did he think the music was? So it sounds like Jesus Christ Superstar. And I'm like, maybe. I, and I, I actually want my brother to listen. And I didn't, I didn't, I mean, I didn't manage to trap him yet um, to say, listen to this and tell me what the music is. Because it, it, there's, there's, I, it's resonating for me, I think, because it's getting a lot of sounds that are coming out of what I lived with. So maybe the, the little bit before the the millennial music hits um and mm-hmm. but there was one line that i thought was was very interesting which you are able to phrase better than i can because i can't remember it but it's 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 the uh, about his feelings oh am i not hot when i'm in my feelings but the way he <laughs> says it the hot right there's uh-huh. one place yeah. that one singer says that word with that shape and sound what's the it? one we know has created this whole situation which is of course uh, is it our favorite horror oh yes story? it is <laughs> which is the horror we've all been living and we know maybe we should do a full stream on that right if you haven't guys haven't figured it out any class yes. more love get up and quick quick kick moving I mean, you guys are having your own conversation it's not great not so maybe greece i don't think greece no greece is greece is already okay so it's all these corruption of innocence movies for sure susan sarandon's mm. in one of them and olivia newton john's in the other one in greece right and i guess what mm-hmm. travolta was in greece no it's rocky heart come on guys yes so it's it's the song yeah. about rocky who is a made thing I mean, he's the, that, that's the idea that Rocky is this um, uh, creature, right? It's the, the, I've been, you know, blonde mm-hmm. hair and a tan. And the, Ken comes up with that. It's like, we see the man behind the tan. I had, I just thought of that, right? It's like everything is resonating with that moment of it's, <clears throat> the sweet transvestite. Rocky. What a, what a coincidence. Yeah. And, and we have we have pointed that out, I think, in- incidentally, every so often that if you, if you're wondering how we've ended up in the particular rainbow colored world that we have right now, uh, look to the music. It's in the yep. song. It's there in the songs. And I think there's something. So am I not hot when I'm in my feelings? Right. That's when it's saying you told me I was supposed to feel like a woman. You told me that I was supposed to, you know, em, you know, have expressions and stuff. And that line, he, I don't think, you know, Ken later, I think they betray the character later when he has to have that conversation. You're like, oh, you know, I just exist for you. I was only made for you. But that's a kind of interesting problem of a rockiness. Right. But he's saying you made me yes. like this. You wanted me like this. You wanted me hot showing you my feelings. Am I not? The massive betrayal of the men in that moment is yeah. is very interesting. I, yeah, I think Gosling performs it so well. There's there's this the, this massive edge to all of the things that he's saying in that because it's like, okay, no, I am a man and I am you know I'm enough, right? But I am the I don't I don't think in the long because Gosling himself is a father, right? I don't think in the long run it's enough for the kin to just be kin enough. Being enough as a man, you now need to be a man. But the the the, mm. the way that the you know I you guys know I made my reputation in this particular little culture context with 
three cheers for white men, right? And the first one was chivalry, which was serving serving women as knights, not as doormats and dogs. We've got do- doormats or doormats, mm. and dogs are not men. No, however, not how, however manly my little dog may be among <laughs> among the other dogs, right? No, that's ridiculous. <laughs> Well, I, I'll, I'll take it back to the riding metaphor because mm. it's perfect. Because in the movie, the Ken's just, you know, he wants to ride. Kendom, what's the symbol of Kendom? It's the horseshoe and the horse head, right? right? They're obsessed. The stallion. The, metaphor. <laughs> the stallion, exactly. Stop, clip, stop clipping your men, ladies. Anyway. The, um, the My thing dog's is, unclipped, like, so like, there. He's a dog. Hey. He's a dog's dog. <laughs> He's going to go after all the girls and I have to break up the fights. <laughs> she's not your girlfriend he'll defend the, my dog the, 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 bring defend home. all other dogs uh, you know it's like my, all of these girls are mine <laughs> he's he's having a good time <laughs> well it, it's like the you know the kens uh getting into that chivalric mentality mm-hmm. you can't be a doormat to a horse if you serve a horse and you are a doormat to a horse, it will kill you, it will kick you, it will throw you off. Like this kind of understanding of chivalry, as you've said, this knighthood, it makes sense to me now because you can't get on one of these animals and say, okay, I'll let you lead. You will die. Right. You have to be in control of it, but not in a way that is controlling to the point of tyranny because, again, you'll get kicked off. So it's like a... Ken's obsession is actually the key to the behavioral change that needs to happen with all of this uh, idea of like masculinity being, you know, being, oh, we're going to start the patriarchy or whatever. But the millennials don't understand that it has to be, uh, it has to be a kind of decision to be leading in the same way that someone will be leading a horse. And yet it's like nowhere in the kingdom. They didn't do it at all. They flew the flag of the horse and they treated the Barbies like they were uh, robots, which is a fascinating thing because they've put the they've put the Rocky Horror back onto the Barbies, right. you know? What were you made for? It's to serve us. Now you have to be robotic about it. You have to be machine-like. Your three cheers for white men chivalry was nowhere to be seen in the kingdom. Well, the, the thing is, the kid, no, the, the, right. right. But the, when he said it's not about horses, it actually is about horses, because it's about, and I, I, I feel like we have touched on this, where we just condense it all into the epic stream that this one is, um, training yourself yes. to work with the animals. So, you know, mm-hmm. training yourself to work with a dog well is also making sure that, you know, he, sp- he stays, he, 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 he doesn't pee in my mother's house again, right? You know, that there, there's, a lo- there's a lot of work. And in order to work well with the animals, you have to train yourself. That this, this comes in, mm-hmm. in, the, in the chivalry in the, middle, in the Middle Ages, it comes in with the falconry. And, you know, we've, we've touched on that before, too. It's like you cannot work with a falcon if you're emotionally flighty. Because you'll startle yeah. the birds and they'll they'll um, bait. They'll end up hanging off their jesses, right? Because they've flown up and then they get pulled down, right? And and mm-hmm. the similar knights, you know, like we started with this, like they had to be changing leads just to make those turns so that they can do those charges, those you know wonderful Hollywood charges on the on the uh, um, hor- the horses. That takes a man yeah. training. With it's like there's a reason that riding a horse well is good indication of being able to train yourself to behave well Mm -hmm. yeah yeah it's it's a very complicated thing (laughs) i'm feeling it as we're talking uh (laughs) it's very i have a mere dog right it's like you you (laughs) you have a horse (laughs) well i don't have a horse (laughs) somebody else's horse um, yeah, I've got someone else's horse. Uh, but the yeah, I, the 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 process of get, of 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 coming into an arena with this animal, right? It's like uh, uh, someone was you know being cute, and flirting with me in DCR, and I was saying, oh, you know, I'll find you someone that doesn't have lethal hobbies. But it's true. <laughs> if you take this animal, you go into the arena. Like I cross myself before I get on this thing. 
it's normalized because everyone in the in the environment is used to it but it's like a real thing you're about to get on something that could kill you mm -hmm. so you have to be calm doesn't matter if you had a bad day doesn't matter if someone's screaming at you like the level of focus you have to get it's it's laser sharp right. that animal moved one little muscle and suddenly the trainer knows that something is wrong so i'm listening to the trainer they're saying uh you know she's got a sore stomach how do you know oh look at the way that it, she reacts when i pull the girth a little bit oh okay i wouldn't have even noticed that yeah you get to know them after a while and you realize this isn't normal okay because they're all completely different once you're on the thing, that's it. There's no like emergency release valve. The trainer's there. They can't do anything. Once you're on that animal, it's you and that animal. Mm -hmm. And so everything that you're doing in that space, it's immediate cause and effect. You can't run away from the consequences. Every, every decision you make has a, an effect on the animal and yourself and the people around you. And we have all grown up, my generation, in environments where all of that has been taken yep. away in the name of equality. I'm better at this than most people, even though I'm terrible at writing, just because I had the chutzpah to get on that animal in the first place. If we live in this world of, like, total equality and everything has to be completely fair and equal and the boys have to be pulled back in order to push the women to the front, we end up with an entire generation of men who are scared to do what I'm doing. Right. And I, like, I'll speak very freely because I might as well now. I've got nothing to lose. How can I respect someone who's not willing to do what I'm doing? You can't, as a woman, respect someone who's not willing to match you and to get better than you at something. We have to look at our men in esteem. True respect is to esteem them and say, wow, you can do something I can't do. You're capable at doing something I can't, can't do, which most of the time is regulate your emotions better than I can. Right. Women feel safe around men that can regulate themselves enough so that the girl can be the crazy one, crazy pregnant one, crazy mum that has the children and everything's chaotic and whatever. Ah, oh, daddy will handle it. My husband will handle it. But these men have not been raised to get into an arena and regulate themselves to that degree. If I explain to most people, what are you, oh, you know, like, what are you doing with your hobby now? Oh, I'm writing. Oh, what? Yeah. This was normal in this culture. Mm -hmm. We were equine people. So why is it such a new thing? It's because danger has been eliminated. But I don't think it's just the danger. It's that competition has been eliminated. Men have been told, don't stand out. Don't do anything too risky. Don't push yourself. Don't be uncomfortable. You know, don't risk injury. Don't risk death. Just like, just be Ken. Be in your feelings. That's it. Yeah. But ultimately, <laughs> everybody's been ill-prepared for their actual uh, their actual destiny as uh, men and women becoming parents so for me, being on the being on the poor poor girl that I'm on, you know, swing sideways as I'm going, <laughs> I'm 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 beginning to understand. Okay, this is like this is what this is what we're working with. Um, I want to I want to ride straight. I'm still going to swing sideways as a millennial because that's how I've been educated, and I pull myself back up into it uh, into a, a mentality of thinking. Okay. The boomers wanted me to swing in this direction. I was educated to avoid the corners because the corners corners are tough. Corners are where the competition is. So I avoid the corners. All of this kind of stuff, like I could go into the metaphor really deeply. Mm. Compete, compete, compete. But like actually uh, it's it's something that everybody can can fix. It just takes effort. It just takes effort. But if the men are not willing to actually move into an arena, it doesn't have to be a horse arena, just like an arena of intense competition where there are winners, where there are losers, where there with are other clear, men. Like, uh, yeah, with other men, no women. Right. Uh, then, and 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 the more that we're pushing for uh, transgenderism in sport now, is the more everything is being uh, destroyed. The, the boys are no longer competing against other men. So uh, it's it's crystallizing the dynamics of the millennials, mm -hmm. saying men and women compete against each other instead of 
uh, prepare yourselves to be romantic partners of the other sex and to create a family. Um, but yeah, we, I mean, we have to stop blaming each other for this. We did not choose this dynamic. Millennials were not, <laughs> we didn't vote. There was no democratic decision to say, okay, we're all going to prepare for a career to be girl bosses and you're all going to prepare to be useless. Right. <laughs> no one made that decision. They didn't. So we have to fix it together. Stop attacking each other and fix it. Well, I do take hope from another of the movies that I watched in the in my I've been watching a lot of movies like recently, haven't I? We gotta talk about Puss in Boots, yeah. right? Shrek yep. four is very good and very interesting because first we have so we have you know the subversion of the subversion is what we're, we're trying to work out here. So I mean, and I think Shrek is a great fairy tale because he rescues the princess in the first one, right? Fiona is rescued. Okay, so she turns green, but okay. But they fall in love and and, and he rescued her. And then in the second one, they meet the in-laws and he has to like be okay at being the green one and not the handsome one. Shrek is a handsome guy, is pretty handsome, but they choose to be green. Okay, fine. And then he doesn't want to be king, which is okay. He goes off and gets Arthur in number three, but Fiona's pregnant. Yeah. And in four, it mm -hmm. opens with, I think in the credits in three, you had all the babies, right? And I'm not entirely sure how many little Shreklets there are because they keep mixing and matching and they're like puppies and they sort of fall all over each other and they're all green. I think they're mm -hmm. three. I'm not sure. Um, that in, in four, he, they're, you know, Shrek amongst the family, right? And they're going to a birthday party and the... The Shreklets are all, you know, in chaos as birthday parties are. And something happens to the cake that he's laboriously made sure to get. And he's like, ah, mm -hmm. and he goes and he finds Rumpelstiltskin who makes a contract for him. <laughs> Golly, I can't believe they made this, got this movie through and made it. It's amazing, right? <laughs> Rumpelstiltskin has a contract, which, you know, Shrek is like, and, and they uh -huh. say, you know, if you, if you, sign this you'll give away something that doesn't isn't really valuable at all it's just one day of your life and you'll get this one 24 hours where you don't have to be that dad guy again mm -hmm. and of course the day that rumpelstiltskin takes is the day he was born <laughs> so i'm talking about <laughs> debt slavery right he's like, you, you, you don't even have your life anymore and so Shrek finds out it's you know it's it's basically it's a wonderful life it's jimmy stewart's great movie it's like what would have happened if i'd never been born well guess what happens to fiona if shrek wasn't there to rescue her from the dragon which isn't really the dragon which the donkey falls in love with and they have donkeylets okay right if shrek wasn't there she has to be the girl boss yeah and 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 yeah. it's it's like all credit to the shrek makers that the resolution of this is after he rescues her again from the situation which she has to be leading all the other ogres against the tyranny of Rumpelstiltskin and his witches. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, I'm like, just like, am I seeing this? Is this actually happening? Witches <laughs> under contract? Shrek has to, you know, rescue mm -hmm. Fiona so that she can go back to being a mom. And he's a dad and they have a family and the best thing ever is birthday party. Birthday party. You yeah. were born. Yeah. Yep. It's sad, isn't it? Let's stop crying. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Birthday parties. <clears throat> That song just popped into my head. I'll put I'll post it later. But it's a kind of bittersweet, almost sad song, but they're singing Happy Birthday. Now I realize where that comes from. From from Shrek or from It's an Israeli it's mm -hmm. no, it's an Israeli song. It's called the Yom mm Hunedit. -hmm. Happy birthday. And I, I always liked it. Now I now I now I know why. It was a bittersweet kind of happy birthday. Mm -hmm. But that makes sense. Because our generation have bittersweet happy birthdays. We need more babies. <laughs> the other, the other, but the Fiona girl boss is real. It, it's it's a she's real. She's forced thing. into she being did not the girl boss to when do this. Shrek cool. wasn't there to rescue her. They they yeah. did that in the Shrek movies. I couldn't believe it. Yay! <laughs> I mean, it's 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 yeah. hard need to find. There are movies that have been sneaking through 
that are about the men. Uh, Puss in Boots does that too, right? The men saying, I mm-hmm. stand up to this. I take the risk. Yeah, they have yeah. to. That That's why, like, I, I sounded heartless before, you know, when the... The gentleman who said what about the was it a, a man who did the comment but uh you know what about the boys that are worried about not being able to mm. provide i mean everyone couldn't use more money i mean no one is ever like i have enough right. money <laughs> Mill- millionaires are not content they still want another million like it's it, 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 if young men trip themselves up into this like uh thinking that they're not going to be good enough providers and therefore it can never be done. Well, you've just taken yourself out of the arena. Congratulations. You didn't even learn how to ride. Yeah. I, I go into an arena and I think, hopefully I don't get kicked in the head today or last night. Oh, I'm glad I didn't get thrown off onto the floor. <laughs> I'm going to do it again tomorrow. Literally, I'm going to do it again tomorrow. <laughs> uh, don't fall but, off. I uh, need you in the stream. No, it's all right. I'll be fine. I have to do it. I have to, like, I actually have to do this. I have a compulsion that is never going to go away. <laughs> um, but uh, this, this like, uh, this phobia of risk and uh, and this mm. fear that men have now of looking embarrassed, and the, the shame fear that they have, that the boomers gave you, this is what you have to get over. And I'm not saying it in a heartless way, but that, like, mind control, the boomer voice in your head that's saying, you're going to look stupid, don't try, this isn't coming from millennials. This is your mother. Yeah. This is the boomer voice saying, don't do it. You look stupid. You're, you're being too boisterous. Sit down. You're too hyperactive. Don't do this. Don't do that. Be good. Sit quietly. It's not a millennial voice in your head. And I know that it's common because, you know, my guy friends talk about mm. this with me and that they have over the years. And I know exactly where, where, uh, where it's coming from. The thing is, the fear of looking embarrassed is stopping everybody from doing something important. The fear of failure, the fear of risk. These are things that make men magnificent. This is like the thing that makes a man beautiful, is that he's willing to risk failure or injury or embarrassment or shame or poverty or whatever it is just to do what he wants to do. Well, to be a dad, we have to we have to get to be a dad. Exactly. <laughs> but the, yeah, and, no, and, but, and thinking but about ultimately, this, ultimately, that's what it is, isn't it? So, dad jokes are actually dad jokes are proof of men's status. In fact, ironically, because you never make fun of your mom. All right, the uh, the mom jokes are not a thing, not in loving ways. Mm-hmm. Dad jokes are because. I, I noticed this at, um, I was invited to a retreat at um, the Institute of Christ the King and the canons were there. I feel like I've said some of these things, but we'll just keep repeating them so people hear them. Yeah, the, the, you know, the, 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 retreat, the kids at the retreat, they're in their 20s and early 30s. And, the, you know, they're telling dad jokes about the canons. You want your father to be the guy who can have the dad joke be roasted and have the dad jokes told about because you can trust him to take care of you. Yeah. Dad jokes are beautiful yeah. because they show how dad's there. And you don't make you don't make fun of your mom that way. You might make her scream <laughs> with <laughs> plastic crayfishy things that she sees. I have no idea why I know this. Um but dads, you know, they they can take it because they actually are taking care of you. Mm. I miss my dad so much. Yeah. Yeah. All his flaws and running away and stuff like that. It's like, but, the, but the, you know, I really, really, really miss men who were able to do the, da- you know, carry the dad jokes. I love all the dad jokes on, mm. on Social Galactic. That's good. Being considered an in, you know an infiltrator, or, and I don't know, I, maybe I'm missing the joke, right? But I think but stop being suspicious <laughs> of the wrong thing, right? It's like Jesus is Lord, and dads need to praise God, and moms yeah. need to yeah. take care of their kids and teach them to scan. We have this book that we'd like you to read. <laughs> It's got, we do it's got have bears in it. <laughs> <laughs> and you will enjoy reading it with your children that you're at home with, tra- teaching them beautiful language and stories mm-hmm. and so they can grow up to be good, true, and beautiful yeah. in their 
yeah activities well the 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 story that we have is specifically to show that you know the boys go on an adventure and we wrote a story for boys going on an adventure going on an adventure and and taking a risk and finding something beautiful yeah so and it all works out well in the end they get the girls too yeah (laughs) even the girls have even though the girls have been mean Mm -hmm. because girls can be ladies don't don't lie (laughs) (laughs) all that stuff about we're the sweet ones that (laughs) no 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 no. (laughs) we have to be reminded not to be the mean ones (laughs) okay well that was a ride yeah it was it was, it was iconic as promised iconic ride <laughs> are you gonna sing are you, do you probably you said you'd sing you're not gonna sing are you oh no you know why did no, you make no, me not today. closer oh, to fine <laughs> am i am i not hot when i'm in my f- am i not hot <laughs> did you hear it now you can hear it now right it's it's frankenfurter singing about can. rocky it's very interesting yeah. that little clip yeah. and you know they the mute the writers for the music must have been putting all that stuff in because everything else has all those kinds of references so i know i know the layers mm-hmm. in the music are in there i just need someone who has the skill to dissect it the d- 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 dissect is like dead to d- untangle those webs so that i can see them more clearly mm-hmm. Mm. Oh, it was a, it was very Rocky Horror ish. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> no, I'm not. Gonna sing, I'm not going to sing. Casey, today. Casey is now arguing with us, saying, "Speak for yourselves. I'm delightful." Well, you are. So are we. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, we're all delightful. delightful. Trotting sideways, <laughs> completely delightful in our in our chariot of of. of of dra- dragons right yes yes our drag our dragon chariot mm-hmm. we're, we're all we're all absolutely delightful <laughs> and, and you can trust us absolutely because we are christ's yeah <clears throat> yeah well i mean that's the only way that's the only way that any of this is going to be restored yes. uh, like when you were describing too before about you know everyone that you've ever slept with you're connected to for the rest of your life this kind of thing i think it's the kind of stuff that needs to be brought into confession. It needs to be brought into to the altar yeah. of the Lord. It's why Protestantism can't fix a culture like this, because there's no central point at which you can bring all of this mess and work it out with God in a, in a way that you can see where all of your stuff is going very clearly. You're putting it all on an altar. You're putting Christ. I don't think that it's hopeless for this generation that's wrecked itself <laughs> in the boomification. It just requires some understanding between men and women to see where we've all been, where we're, what we've all been through, and a real sense of, like, we're all going into rehab now. Right. If we come in as Christians, as uh, converts or as, you know, um, uh, reverts, for the lapsed Catholics and lapsed Orthodox, you're going to come into an environment with people that have been through the same boomification. Like all of us, we're all fallen. Of, like yeah, and yeah, of and, course. And like, I just, I was just Brad thinking, is useless. as you were saying that it's like Christ is Father because He carries it all. I mean, it's like this yeah. is He's the talk about becoming you know, Father of all because He's carried all of us, absolutely all mm. of us. We're going to have to, I say, one day we're going to have to actually, well, we, we, we do actually keep showing it and, and break it down. But I think the, the, the fear of the theological claims is mm-hmm. we're, we, I mean, I don't, I don't, I'm not sure we've chickened out of it, but it's, it's more, how can we find the way to express this sense of God, the father carrying all of us in, in, in the way that he did and that. To do that, he had to become man. Mm. And we keep trying. We keep trying to do that in our poetry and in our stories that we're writing for you all. Um, but we recognize that it's still like to be unpacked, to be to be continued. 
Yes, yeah. it's a big, it's a big work. It's a big work. <laughs> well, so we've 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 done, we've done our we've done our actual time now. So I I will I will let you back off into the wilderness. No, um, <laughs> I that I am I am in 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 family world. I'm I may or may not be able to stream next week. We'll keep you posted about whether I have Wi-Fi access. Not being in this basement. Um, and uh, we are hoping everyone will subscribe to the newsletter that we're we're doing through our website at dragoncommonroom.com um, so that we can keep you updated on new things that we've learned and been reading and hints to other stuff that we've written about. Last week's newsletter um, was about Mary and links to some of my work, some of our meditations on what we think about um, in in our praise of Mary, we we're we're trying to we recognize also we're trying to sort of build the the nest <laughs> to keep, I don't know the like eggs mm -hmm. the nest I've, I've I've got too many animals in my head um, <laughs> to 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 create more of the back structure that we actually are working from but hasn't I think been as visible as it needed to be for people to appreciate the slots and places that we're putting things we rather than just being crazy web we're crazy spiders just, you know making webs that <laughs> are, are, are with our, our with our um our window in in the in the stream right with the the window from st john canticus mm -hmm. and our web-like presence with our dove and stuff we're trying to create more support but subscribe to the newsletter yeah. um Get a Roy Berry Alice and start reading to your kids. We're going to you know, keep trying to figure out ways to help people unpack what we put into that because there's a lot. And we yeah. are writing away at Draco Chemicus. There'll be yet more things to announce about when the books are coming out, um, Act One of the Casino and such. Am I getting any better at the promotion? I don't like the, the promotional stuff. I'm not good at <laughs> so Like and subscribe and please be back next time. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Good. <laughs> I'm worse than you. <laughs> we don't want to leave is the thing. We want to just sit here on our horses streaming into the night. Okay, that's 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 good. Uh there's gotta be a catchphrase. Here be dragons and doves. Night everyone. Mm -hmm.